Hey everybody, it's another edition of David's World today, and today I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit of where I've been. Now, when it comes to the whole being gone for two months, I really apologize for that. I've been kind of busy. As you can see, completely different change of scenery. Back there, they got uh, some empty beds, and you're probably wondering, why is there empty beds? Where are you at? Well, I'm at Job Corps. Earl C. Clemens Job Corps to be exact. I, my bed is right there. I didn't make it yet. I just got through washing the sheets and stuff and the comforter that they give you. Basically what I'm here for, and what most people will be wondering why you're here, is because I'm here to do some welding and to get my ASC certification. Those are my two main reasons why I'm here. Now, originally I only came for the ASC certification, but when I finally sat down and thought about it, I was like, you know what? If I get my AC certification and I know how to work on cars, why not just build my own car from scratch or something as a project, you know? So I took that into consideration when I was choosing the trades, which is what they basically call a class this year is trades. So that way I have like a kind of a game plan. Before they let me out of Career Preparation Center, which is CPC here, they, um, had me go on to this program that they just recently started called MyPace. It basically outlines a whole career plan for you. It tells you, which is really handy, how much you'll be making estimated and how long you'll be there, so to speak, if you decide to further your education further up, not just here, but in college, further down the road. So that helps you kind of get an estimate of how much time and money you're going to be investing into it. So it's kind of like, um, say you go to Walmart. You got to look at it from this perspective. You go to Walmart, you buy a pair of, I don't know, a shampoo kit or something. You buy that product. You go up to the register, you buy it, you're done. Well, what you don't see behind the scenes there, and most people won't know this because they just don't take the time to think about it, but you go up in there and you buy that shampoo little uh, kit or whatever and Walmart has bought that from somebody else they bought it from them at a certain price say you bought it for ten dollars ten ninety nine whatever they go and they buy it from their uh, distributor from the factories and they buy it for six six dollars even they mark it up Four ninety nine, so that way they can make a profit, so that way they can cover some of the costs. Kind of a no-brainer there to make um, a little bit of a profit on your uh, items. So basically what we're doing in the MyPace program was looking at if we do all that and we go through all that effort, are we going to actually make a good return investment on our time and money that we've put into the careers that we're choosing. So with that all being figured out before we even start our trades, we got ourselves on that straight, narrow, and clear path. Now to go on a little bit about the center itself. You must think, wow, there's a lot of people there. Oh yeah, this is one of the biggest ones in Kentucky. Now, I think currently there's like 500 people here on campus. It's like a four to one ratio when it comes to the uh, women versus men. For every girl here on campus, there's like four dudes. So there's a, it's a lot more dudes than girls here. But besides that, they have these activities here on campus like pool, um, what else was it? They have chess, you know, those little board games and stuff. They have bowling, they're supposed to, before I leave here, have a swimming pool up. It, for some reason, it's under construction right now. I don't know why. And if my uh, breathing or voice sounds a little bit weird, it's because I've been sick lately. The weather just turned from extremely hot and uncomfortable, sweating literally gallons a day, walking to and from. Oh, you can do a lot of walking, so I'll cover that in a minute. But they're taking um, the swimming pool and since it's under construction right now, they should have it done technically in about eight months. But that's one of the things here on campus. 
that's in the works. They have a gym. They have a workout room for men and women here. They have a basketball room or basketball court. I don't really call it a court. It's not really that big as you know you would see a normal court. Then they have a um, let's see what was it? What was it called? That one thing. Um, oh yeah, the rec center. They have basically that's where all the pool and stuff is taking place is at the rec center. They also have a baseball field, so they have a lot of things to do here, but I find it kind of hard to, you know, endorse myself or engross myself in those things. Most of the time, I'm usually sitting here in my dorm room on the weekends when I'm not in trade, just watching stuff on YouTube, furthering my plans and my goals to get further down the road. My main dream, and why I'm doing all this in the first place, is for two reasons. Well, actually, no, three. First reason, I need a job and I need a good sustainable income to where I can live and, you know, basically just survive. That's the first very important reason. The second reason is so that way when I have all that set up and I have that all set up for myself is I can save up that money. Now, another cool thing about Job Corps is if you get any work base learning, so to speak, that's what they call it, you get paid to do that. It's like having a job while you're at Job Corps, which is already a job within itself, but you know, it doesn't really make much sense, but who am I to judge? You get money from doing it. So, so they take about, I think it's 70 to 75% of that out of your paycheck. Yeah, it kind of sucks at first, but what are you really going to spend it on here? You only go to Walmart once every two weeks you all you get fed you get housed you get all your hygiene requirements met you're basically being completely taken care of here you don't have to worry about clean clothes or not they have these little uh, laundry packets that they give you they don't really smell like much anything but they do clean your clothes so that way Say me, I'm in welding personally. It gets to 100 to 115 degrees in there. It's really hot. And with the thick, hot clothes that we wear, which is mostly cotton because cotton, yes, it burns whenever like sparks or metal or slack is what they call it, flies off from when you're welding with your stick, which is an electrode. It doesn't necessarily catch your clothes on fire. And that little spot that it lands, kind of like skin, which I have, the <laughs> little marks on my arm from it there's little holes that develop in your shirt and it burns that specific spot but doesn't spread any further it's like getting shot with little mini bullets you know kind of the same effect it doesn't really do much for your skin underneath though it just absorbs most of it so it kind of saves you on that uh, but when it comes to the requirements and all the basic needs that every person has, you know, to live a comfortable, modern lifestyle without any worry. You got it here. You got a bed, you got electricity, shoot, you got internet. I know on the weekends you have it all hours of the day and night, but when it comes to trade hours, it cuts off at 12 a.m. so that way people actually get sleep because me personally if I didn't have that I would probably be awake watching YouTube videos and that helps with people's uh, sleep schedules but when it comes also to the Wi-Fi it turns on at 4 p.m. so usually my videos if I'm uploading them during the week they're gonna be somewhere around 4 or 5 ish in the evening but when it comes to people down in Louisville where I came from, there's an hour delay in time. So there's an hour back basically. When I came here on the Greyhound, the ticket that they gave me, it was like 60 bucks or whatever. When I came here, they had a um, little charging port for my phone. It was almost dead, so I charged it. I looked at the time and it said it was like 10.25. It was supposed to be a 10.45 bus, but I was there early, like an hour or two early just to make sure I didn't miss it. And when I got on there and I looked at my phone, it said 1025. So I've been sitting there 
and we were riding down, going to, towards uh, Indiana, I believe, and I looked at my phone again, and it said 10 minutes 25, and it, it literally, I knew in the back of my head, it had not been a minute, because it had been a minute. We had been on the road for about an hour to two hours or something like that, it felt like, and I was like, you know, something's something's not right here. Maybe my phone's broke. So I'll pull out my other phone, which is the one I'm recording on, and it says the same thing, and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So when I finally get to Job Corps, and I asked them, I'm like, hey, I think I lost an hour of time somewhere. And I said, yeah, there's a time thing going on where it's two different time zones, which is really crazy. One hour time zone difference. But I digress. <clears throat> They also give you free health care here as well, so that way if you get sick or you get injured, which me being stupid and hard-headed, I was doing the welding and most of my left arm through here took like the blunt of what I like to call the um, fire tail that comes off the electrode. If you watch any um, stick welding videos, the guy that has the helmet on and everything, there's fire that comes off the electrode because the electricity and the not negative and positive are meeting at that point and that um, metal is not only getting electricity through it, I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think it's either the electrode or the metal itself, the surface, is burning with all that electricity so much that it's creating a fire tail or ball or whatever you want to call it. It looks more like a tail to me. But that is what was going on to my arm and it caused like a first I think that's where it just gets the, the uh, first layer of skin like no I think that makes more sense the other way around like, like a third degree burn or something like that like if you burn your hand on a stove or something like ah that hurts but it doesn't really show a little muscle or skin or something like that but when it was healing up and I finally went down there it um looked uh, felt a lot like leather so I don't know what type of burn that is but just a uh, moral of the story is do not wear nothing when you're welding because if you leave your arms unprotected you're going to get burned and there's just no way around it some people they get used to it i don't know how they do it my skin just ain't it just ain't gonna work with that they have these leather sleeves which add to the heat that's going on in your body whenever you're um in that welding shop when it's 115 degrees in there yeah, they keep the doors and the little thing, the garage doors open and everything, <clears throat> but in the end, it really doesn't help much. <clears throat> Maybe cools it off five, ten degrees in there. Still, it's hot. And when you finally get out there in the um, open, so to speak, outside, you completely feel a difference in temperature. <clears throat> now, they have us doing certain things in that trade, so that way, well, let me go back a little bit. In that trade, I'm there for basics. They have basic and advanced. Advanced, I'm not doing that. Basic is where you learn the fundamentals of it. You do some beads, and which is basically a line you make with the electrode. Now the tricky thing is about that, you have to go a certain speed, and there's this molten puddle of metal that's melting off of that electrode when the electricity is going through it. It actually, makes um, like little wakes you have to look for that go back and forth like that and if you don't see that you don't hear like a bacon sizzling sound you're not really doing it right now if you make a certain uh, speed and while well, the electrodes burning it's actually getting smaller if you keep all that concise and you're going down an angle like that you'll have a good beat and if it's at the right amperage too and you don't have a lot of water or stuff like that but me personally what we're training with is 6010 electrodes and those have a very high um, splatter. It's very uh, violent when it comes to its arc and everything else whenever it's trying to cut through metal. But I digress a lot. The main point of all this to let you know is to keep you informed. I'm here at Job Corps, I'm trying to better my life and I'm trying to get to the ultimate goal of having a place to stay, apartment, house, whatever. Whether it's just me or my significant other, I'm not gonna name any names, but where we get to that point where I'm not only able to sustainably have myself taken care of, 
but I can save up money and then I can buy what most people would call a crazy idea, but I see hundreds and hundreds and possibly even thousands of people doing it on YouTube. It's called van life. They take these vans and kind of like my uh, car, when I made that video, my car's a camper, you, you should actually take a look at that. It's pretty cool. The audio is kind of bad on it and I do apologize for that in advance. You can hear like 90% of what I'm saying, but I didn't realize that and I already deleted the footage. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna leave it up there. Maybe later on I'll re-record it and take that one down, you know, redo it over. I didn't get really many views on it, so it's not really gonna matter. But basically what you saw from that is I had a bed in there and I had a TV in there. That's just the basics. That's kind of like a go away for a weekend. You still have to find a public restroom. You still got to shower, keep your hygiene up. You still got to find a place to eat. Some stuff like that, you know? That's just the basic bare bones. You have a place to sleep and you drive around. You basically a hotel on wheels. You just don't have like the pleasantries. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting a Sprinter van, maybe a Chevy, I don't know. Or I could get a, a Promaster, I don't know. Maybe 1500 or 3500. It just depends on the roof height. I want to get one that's about six feet, nine inches, something like that. I think that's what it was. Last time I went down to a dealership and looked at it, they're expensive though. So it would take me a minute, even though I'm getting a good paying job, whichever one I go with the welding or the mechanics or possibly even both. But it's going to take me a minute to find the time to actually save that up, put that to the side and figure and budget all that out. Another thing that the RAs, which is the, uh, I don't know what they stand for exactly. I'll have to find that out and I'll find some way to post it down here. But basically the RA, her name is Miss A. I'm going to call her Miss A because I'm not going to put any names out there, but she's pretty cool. She had us do this uh, sheet, which I actually have over here. I'll be right back. It's working on a budget, basically. In the very back, she actually did all this by hand for us. She's actually trying to set us up for success in the long run. I didn't really put much on there because I am only looking in the short term when it comes to my Christmas break coming up, which is another thing to talk about. So I only put like a goal of $90 on there. How am I actually gonna get that? Um, well, you can sell cigarettes here on campus, you're not technically supposed to, but when people really want something, they'll pay you good for it. So that's another way to make money around here. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other time. Now, when it comes to, what was it? Christmas break, yes, Christmas break. I had to look back at the paper, sometimes I, when I'm around talking or something, I have to jar my memory back. I forget things like that. I have a very short attention span when it comes to talking to the camera. So forgive me for some slow interruptions. But when it comes to the Christmas break, for as far as I know, that's the only break we get when we're here, like in school or summer breaks and stuff. But this is kind of a mix of military, school, and job-based learning. It's a it's really weird mix, and they have high school classes here too, so it's kind of a mix of that. I have classes in the morning that I have to go to. They're called academics. Since I scored low on my uh, uh, test that they give us, it's called a tape test. I can't remember what that stands for off the top of my head. It's something about a, basically what adult level you're at in education. I scored low, but not too low, just low enough to where I'd have to go into classes. So I'm trying to tape out, so to speak. I have math and reading in there. But when it comes to the whole vibe of the environment that I'm in now, it really does feel like more military than schooling or jobs or anything else. Because you have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning every day. And you have to make your bed to a certain standard. And up back there on the wall, um, I'll try editing it in somewhere, taking a picture of it and showing you guys. Like, 
right up there or something. Basically, there's a bed that, or bed diagram, that you have to follow. There's um, a certain way you have to make your bed. I'll cut the video here and I'll, you know, restart it and show you guys the made final product. So basically what you got going on here is this has to be about a dollar bill's length, top to bottom or width, whatever way you want to look at it. And then you have to tuck these flaps underneath the bed on both sides. And I'm gonna cut the bed here and show you the bottom of the bed. So basically right in through here, we got a really loose corner right here. What we're supposed to be doing is called a hospital corner. You take a flap of it about, I don't know, right here, you pinch it off and then you move it towards the head of the bed. And you fold the access underneath it like that. And you gotta do that on both sides. And it used to be up in 305 where I originally was at, which was the career preparation um, dorm itself, that we had to do that not only up here, but up there. But as I showed you about the um, dollar bill, the width of that, and the little flap over where they had the sheet exposed, they obviously changed it up a little bit. They're teaching us wrong, apparently. But you didn't hear me say that. So basically what you gotta do is just tuck underneath there. You gotta make sure it's smooth, kinda like that. And if it's not smooth, they'll count you off for it. You gotta make sure it's smooth, tucked in all the way around. And when I cut the video back, you'll see the finished bed. So basically this is what it's supposed to look like. You got the sides tucked in, Smooth all the way across. Kind of smooth this on top. You can see wrinkles because this comforter, it's not perfect. Right in here, you got your little uh, spreadsheet with the little elastic things. It's supposed to cover up the uh, white part right through there, the little bed sheet they got going on. That's supposed to be tucked up underneath there. Run all the way back. So that's basically what we have to do every single morning is that. The little pillowcase thing, that's just an extra that I usually do. Make it look, you know, just a little bit better. So basically, guys, in a nutshell, that's what has been going on lately. And most people have been wondering, what is, where's my stuff? Like, I told you I'd show you the stuff in my locker. Uh, on the next clip, I'm going to show you that. And to explain what my car is right now, that's at my sister's house as of right now. Sitting there until I get back. My cat is at my friend's house where I was, where I made that um, couple of videos where I was sitting at their tail or whatever. And when I get back for Christmas break, along with not just my car, but my scooter, which I should really make a video about that. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. But basically, I made one video now I remember it's about me moving the scooters kickstarter up and everything it's a Honda Metropolitan an 03 and I have for the life of me even though I've done some poking and prodding there's something electrically wrong with it that I just can't figure out but I'm gonna try to see if I can at least get it started while I'm back on break put some new gas in it clean the carburetor out and all of that I'm gonna have to find uh, to get a disc wheel grinder or whatever they call them angle grinders or whatever cut some exhaust pieces off of my uh, car because I have an exhaust section about yay long that will fit inside I bought it specifically because it would fit inside I'm also here learning to weld so that way I can weld that onto the car whenever I do uh, another lift up of the car to where I can permanently adhere, adhere to it but when I'm there I'm just gonna buy some steel stick which is this uh, kind of uh, epoxy stuff I guess it comes with a little plastic stick and it's kind of gray dark gray looking you can put it around the edges and stuff and it's kind of like a liquidy thing kind of like and you just slide it like that that's what I'm thinking about doing just sliding in like that and like that because the uh, catalytic converter and the pipe are completely separated I don't know if I showed that on one of my uh, other videos but Basically, they're just it's just hanging there and I have to fix that for the loud exhaust leak to go away And then once I get that done, I'm gonna have to that's basically the easiest step out of all of it Once I get that done, 
I'm going to go back and I'm going to torque the um, caliper mounting bracket bolts and the uh, caliper, uh, what do they call those, the slide guide pin, yeah, the guide pin bolts. Those need to be torqued down to like 15 or 10 pounds. Me, I just tie it it by hand, but I want to make sure since now i got a torque bar back at the uh, place. I want to make sure that's all taken care of and torque the wheels down and everything, you know. And uh, then I have to do the engine work, but I did some research online. That ticking noise, I believe it's um, due to me doing the oil change incorrectly because most mechanics, whenever they fill the uh, engine oil up with new oil, they put oil in the um, filter first. So when they screw it back on there, there's no air gap because if there was uh, no oil in there, which would I didn't do, I didn't put oil in there. The oil pump sometimes has trouble getting oil to specific areas. So what I'm gonna try first is put doing a new oil change and putting the right type of oil in there, which I put a thicker one in there thinking it would quiet it down, but it's not really working. So I'm just going back with what's recommended 5W30. And I'm, I'm gonna make a video on that too. Fingers crossed, it'll work. But that's what I'm gonna try first. If it that doesn't work, then I got a backup plan along with the Chilton's manual to where I could take the valve cover off and get down and tighten the rocker arms. Maybe that will fix it, I don't know. Maybe it's a valve and I'm just wasting my time <coughs> or a rod. And if it's a rod, then I'm really kind of screwed because rod sets cost a lot of money, which I don't have right now. So if it ends up being something like that major that I just can't fix at the moment, then, sorry, camera did something really funky there. I don't know what happened, but then if it becomes a rod or something like that that I just can't fix, then I'm just going to drive it until the wheels fall off and the engine blows up because engines are replaceable. And if I throw a rod or whatever, then I throw a rod. It's literally an O2 Mountaineer, 250,000 miles on it. If it dies in a fiery death, then it dies in a fiery death. I put a lot of time and effort into it, but it's not the only one in the world. And by the time I get out of here and I'm actually using it, I'm probably gonna have enough money to throw around where I could just get myself another one or go to a junkyard and pull an engine out and throw that thing in there. But as I was saying, when it comes to the car in general, to not really indulge in just one specific area, I have the engine, and then I have the exhaust, I have the brakes that I need to tighten down. And then what I'm gonna do is go into the inside and see if I can't fix anything up in there. More specifically, redo my design, what I'm thinking about doing. There's two plywood pieces that aren't a hinge that go like that, the front and the back. What I'm thinking about doing is cutting it down the middle, having hinges like that to where I could get like a foam in there, replace the mattress or whatever, to where I could fold it up and slide it out and have the middle of the frame where it's supported. There's a beam that goes down like that, comes out to the side, right smack in the middle where the frame is. Have those kind of on hinges too, to where it can go like that and collapse and then fold off to the left and tuck away to where I can have like flooring or something underneath the bed. So when I'm not using the bed, it could be a living space too. I want to make a, as much use as I can out of that space. I want to find a way to uh, incorporate more things into that one little tiny area. I know it sounds insane, but it's insane to live inside of your car, some people would say at the same time. But if I can improve that in some fashion or way better than it is now, why not? You know, I already come this far with it. Why not improve it a little bit more? And I've also, and I, you know, entertained the thought of actually drilling about a couple inch screws, Phillips, down into the board to where it secures it to the frame on a certain section. So that way, or maybe with another hinge, I don't know. So that way it doesn't slide around because whenever I'm lifting it up, I have the problem of it like falling into the frame or whatever. At an angle, then I gotta go over to the other side of the door, lift it up, scoot it back onto the frame because that thing is literally like, right on the edge of the frame, all the way around. If it wasn't for that center support, it would probably bow in the middle or something. So, what I'm thinking about doing is taking that, 
and keeping it secure, maybe on a hinge, something like that. When I finally have it all figured out in here, you know, this madness going on in here, then I'll show you all, do an updated tour on the car with better, better audio this time, might I add, because the audio, oh my gosh, I'm not going to even put music in there. Like, the, it was terrible. I was listening to it and I ended up deleting the footage so I couldn't re-edit re the stuff because once I'm done with the video and I'm comfortable with it, then I just delete the footage after I'm done uploading it to where I can have more storage on my phone to make the next video. But I learned my lesson on that. So sorry about the audio issues. I know it's crappy on that video, but it's going to be better next time. even if. I have to take the initiative of not putting any music on there. It's going to be kind of a dull background noise, but I think it'll be worth it because all the van tours and stuff that I've seen on YouTube, most of them don't have music anyway. So, you know, it's kind of pointless to shoot yourself in the foot there with the music. So, um, whenever I'm done with all that and I got the job and I got the money and I got the car fixed, then I'll throw an update video your way, but I'm not going to go silent for you know, another freaking two, three, four months or whatever. I'm going to post uh, videos as much as I can in the next two to three years while I'm here. Maybe even do a little vlog or something like that if they allow me to walk around on campus with my phone sticking up in my face like that. I don't know. They let me take some footage, which I'm going to show somewhere in the video in the beginning. You know, do some editing tricks. You'll see, like, the pool table and all that stuff. And, uh, or scene, pool table and stuff. I'm going to put some footage together so you guys can get a little bit of a better feel. So it, it flows a little more. Better than it would if, uh, if it didn't have it in there. And hopefully I can give you all some really entertaining stuff. And without that, you know, without that being said or whatever, I'm going to uh, show you guys my locker top to bottom and I'm going to show you my snack drawer <laughs> that is where I keep all the good stuff so let me pick y'all up here and take you on a little specialized tour I'm going to switch the camera so basically I got my little tripod thing up here because you know I just felt like throwing it up there we have locks so that way our stuff stays secure it's my little job core ID thing got me on there lock fits right in there it's not really big, but it serves my purpose as well. I got my uh, money that I made up uh, sitting up in here from, you know, selling them new port holes. Got some safety glasses for my trades. Um, let's see. Oh, that's just a printed off paper that didn't really turn off too well. That's my auxiliary cord that I got while I was here. Now this is my certification or certificate or whatever. It's like I like a little graduation thing from uh, my pace and um, oh, okay I just had to make sure that the camera angle wasn't all the way down here I'll cover it up and stuff because the first second there I thought it was but back to what I was saying I made some cups down in the um, little recreation area that's another thing that they have they call it the arts and crafts center where you can like do ceramics and stuff now I purposely spelt the word never wrong so it has a little more like corkiness or whatever to it. It's like never give up, you know. Some people get it, some people get it. That was loud. But I also made this UAW cup. That's what they call the trade down here, UAW. Uh, United Auto Workers or something like that. Put my little initials on there, ASC. And I put the Omega symbol, I think. I'm not really sure. I don't remember what that was for my initials again and then it took me forever to make just these because you're working with paint brushes and masking tape and that's basically about it besides the little Newport you see in there money I did uh, some this green paint that they give us it's clear whenever it's done um, brewing and, and stuff and this little heat thing they got going on you know those things that people melt stuff in on uh, YouTube when you're melting the metal, the little furnace things. That's what they got. They bake the ceramics. And I usually put my laptop and all this stuff. That's uh, right down here, the little disc I've been sitting at talking to you guys. My mouse and stuff and all. 
fits right up in here. Now, I got my uh, trade clothes, which is welding things, well, shirts, right up in through here. And if you look closely enough on these shirts, you can see little holes and stuff. I can't really tell if they're in there or visible by the camera or not. But I got three shirts, three pants, and then I got a 5K fun day shirt because uh, there was a uh, 5K fun day going on here. Now these were my original shirts that I came in here with. I call, I call them my shadowing shirts because these basically, you can go into any trade when you start off. They're universal shirts to let people know, hey, he's shadowing, he or she is shadowing, and they um, need to be kept with special attention or whatever. And that, along with on top of the fact, you're new inside the class and the other people have been there longer than you, so you're really going to stand out anyways. But it's just so they have a uniform. And then I keep all of my clothes over here. I had a kind of a spilled whatever on my shirt, so that's why there's not a shirt on this one. But I keep my clothes, my pants folded up through there, and my shirt on top. It saves a lot of space, and I have extra coat hangers because of it keep my towels socks underwear all that stuff over here and since it's getting colder out I'm so glad that I bought my jacket from home the really thick one that my uh, best friend brother-in-law or ex-brother-in-law gave me and they actually give us a jacket you could kind of tell the difference maybe I'm not sure but it is really thin and probably not well best made but you know, it works. And I'm, I'm sitting on my bed. That's why the camera angles change so drastically. They give us fig bars and stuff. And I got an inventory sheet, which is another thing to talk about. Basically, when it comes to inventory, it's basically what it sounds like. you got to take time to mark down everything you got. So that way, they know and you know, and you're both on the same page, that... Everything that you have in that locker is yours. And if somebody else tries to claim it as theirs, there's no way they can. Because it's already on your sheet. You already turned it in. Now, I had to update mine, so I haven't turned it in yet. That's why it's in the locker. They have a, an un-up-to-date un one, if that's the right terminology. Right down here, they gave us like a little, uh, let's see, academy agenda. Dorm agenda, that's what it's called. They give us that. And then this is my little my pace packet thing that got coffee spilt on it and in here I got my like my three pairs of shoes tray boots that I don't use because I got my red ones down there that my awesome brother-in-law at the time suggested that I buy had it for about two years now they have served me so great I one guy when we were in there actually buying them he was coming in to get his replaced to buy another pair and it had been 30 years since he actually went in there to buy a pair because those things have lasted them so long now these are my um, shoes my tennis shoes for when I go into the trade building the blue rec building those are nice to have because they don't allow steel toe boots in there because some people they get butt hurt if they lose at pool or whatever and then they start beating each other up and then that just gets all out of hand and, and there's another thing here about job core if you have um, violence or anything like that they automatically send you home if you get in a fight so you can't get into fights here without the consequence of losing your opportunity the whole reason you came here now I actually got an extra comforter in here because I asked one of the RAs I was like hey mine was all wrinkly and stuff and I just can't get the wrinkles out can I get another comforter and they're like yeah just throw the other one away and I was like throw it away it's a perfectly good blanket so I got another one I'm probably gonna take that home or well I don't technically have a home at the moment but back to my sister's house I refer to it as home because it feels like home sometimes it's more about my sister than anything else because she's really been there for me a lot now I got this right here I couldn't leave with at least some of, without at least some of my DVDs you know I got Twilight, my favorite. And I got Quantum Leap going on through here. And then The Purge, Avatar, 
Purge election year. That's Purge and Purge Anarchy, you know. More Quantum Leap, Titanic, which is a weird, for some reason I thought it would be the DVD, but when I got it, it ended up being like a soundtrack, which really made me mad because I love the Titanic movie. And I thought I scored one on DVD. And then I got this weird old black and white paranormal thing. And I got the Hurt Locker. That's a pretty good movie. Um, I Will Robot, Priceless, Collateral Beauty, X-Men. Don't laugh about Collateral Beauty. It's a pretty good movie. I got the Big Bang Theory. you got to have the Big Bang Theory if you're in a place like this. And then over here, you got Amerigeddon, which is like a kind of a YouTube-ish put on DVD movie thing. And this is the end of it right here, so it's kind of hard to hold it up. You got G.I. Joe Rises of the Cobra. More Big Bang Theory. Disc 3, the same season. And then I got the Teen Titans. What's it called? Switched. Right up and through there. And that's practically about it when it comes to my DVD collection. But that's basically what's been helping me keep my sanity in this place is my DVDs. Being able to watch them on my laptop. Oh, and a funny thing about uh, owning a laptop and you put Linux or something else along those lines on there. It is really, really hard to... Oh my gosh, this thing is making me mad. Because it doesn't want to shut for some reason. Even though it was just shut. There we go. Alright. This thing, I'm going to show you on my laptop. Let me cut it off here and then sit with y'all. Alright, I think I got y'all a pretty good situation right when it comes to uh, being able to use the computer screen. I got this little wireless mouse right here. It's just doing its little boot up thing. I didn't even have it on. Um, let's see, got to type in my little password. Okay, it should put it in there. Or not. Alright, let's just tap it over. Ain't no big deal. It's kind of hard when all the lights are out so you can get a better picture of the screen. Alright, there we go. So basically what you got to download on this thing. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but you got to download it and then it's got to have an updated version of it just to go through all that so you can play DVDs on Ubuntu, which is what I'm running on here. Ubuntu, Linux, let's just ignore that for now, don't really need that. Uh, let's see, where is it? Go here to the favorite bar. Come on, there we go. Alright, I want to just show you all this. VLC Media, that's exactly what we got going on here. And you turn the light on. My roommate just came in, he turned the light on, he completely got rid of the effect there. Alright. So basically, you go to the disc section, and you go to hit play. I don't know why I went down to the drop bar. I already got Twilight in there, so it's going to pop up a DVD. That's all that you got to go through just to get this thing working. And literally, it took me like two to three months just to figure out how to get DVDs to play on here. But I'm glad that I brought my DVDs because I was able to figure it out in the end when I finally had access to the Wi-Fi. Which right now, for some reason... They have this thing going on. <clears throat> Let me turn that off and turn it back on there. Alright, for some reason we got Wi-Fi messing up on us. To not only where we have to sign in with our student ID, which is a given in any government Wi-Fi. But whenever we got <clears throat> this weird, like, what do they call it? It's a script, basically. It's a security strip, script that they got going on that has uh, this weird built-in firewall that you got to download and um, once you got that downloaded then there's a possibility that you'll be able to get it working me when it comes to the Firefox web browser that's the only one I could get working I downloaded a Chromium web browser and for some reason the uh, security script won't download and install on that so I was kind of fortunate to have a backup browser but and it also gives this little uh, sign-in page. I already got all that stuff saved. So, if you can see right in through there. So, Z, Z Scholar is what it's called, that what you got to sign in for. 
basically saying, hey, you're, this is our VPN. You got to use our VPN on our Wi-Fi source and all that. So, and I have no clue how I was going with this one, but when it comes to the internet being trash here, that's probably why I haven't uploaded in a while because I've been trying to figure it out. But let's just give you all a uh, little bit of an insight. Let me just type in Google right here, see if it's working right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's switch that. So basically, that's what's been going on with the Wi-Fi situation. I'm sorry if the audio got bad. My roommate just turned his phone on on full blast. But that's basically what's been going on with that. And a little bit of self-promotion here. Uh, let's see. Let's go to YouTube. YouTube.com. And whenever y'all get the chance, just go up to my little channel right there and hit the subscribe button whenever you get the chance. It's a picture of me and my cat right there. And just let y'all know I'm not with her anymore. I'm with somebody else when I was referring to my significant other. I'm possibly going to make a video with her. I'm going to leave these up because it's only appropriate, you know, it's timeline wise and it's it's my story, my life that's going on right now. That's why it's vlogging and gaming and all that other stuff. So it's a chapter of my life and I feel like it would be wrong to just delete it just because it ain't up to date with the time. So these are all the videos I got going on here. And... You should check them out sometimes, so that way um, you could get up to date on my story. Yeah, video quality has been really bad since my video about two years ago when I first started out. It got a decent amount of views. For some reason, I don't know why, even though this video was so crappy and audio was so bad that I got like 231 views on it. It just blows my mind. And for some reason today, it still climbs every once in a while. I don't know why people like that so much. But, let me turn it all around here. Sorry about that long, drawn out explanation stuff and a little tour of the video or whatever, just explaining, you know, the DVD and everything. I get kind of get carried away every once in a while. But that's going to end the video right here. If y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, I'll try to put them in my next video. There's only like 26 of you guys that are following me right now. So, you know, I can uh, I could throw a, a few of y'all in there, you know. Shoot, if I really work hard at it, I can throw all of y'all in there. So, I won't know unless you ask. Make sure, if you're new here, though, to hit the subscribe button so y'all can join David's World Squad, which is what I'm calling it. Really cheesy name. But that's the only thing I could come up with right now. Maybe I'll come up with something more original in the future. But that's what I got going on. I'll see y'all in the next update or vlog, whichever one happens first. I'm going to see if I can't get my computer running on uh, some sort of game software. See if I can put more games out there instead of just on my phone, which is really crappy right now. I've got lines going through the screen right there. Um, but yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you so much for staying all the way to the end if you did. And I'll see you in the next one.